In the last episode of the series, we said our goodbyes to Crystal Palace and we are now here at Arsenal. Let's go and have a look at the squad, come up with a tactic and see what games we're going to play, what players we might want to bring in, all the usual fun stuff on the first episode of a new club. It's Club 4, Episode 1 with Arsenal. <music> So here we are folks, Arsenal hire Hills in a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate. Damien Hills has left Crystal Palace to join Arsenal. Hills lifted the Skybet Championship with Crystal Palace in 2031 and will now be offered the, the chance to enhance his reputation by bringing success to his new club. Hills will be managing one of his favourite clubs and the significance of this appointment will certainly not be lost on either him or the team supporters. Hills will face pressure to bring immediate success to Emirates Stadium, having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge and will need to hit the ground running if he is to win over those who believe his appointment is a questionable decision. Lewis Enrique was considered to be the favourite for the job. I mean, it said Pep Guardiola, but, but it is unclear whether the club favoured Hills all along. Crystal Palace will now be looking for a new manager. Arsenal have been disappointed in the Premier Division this season and find themselves below expectations in 8th place. Arsenal have only won one of their last five league games. Arsenal are on course to equal their lowest Premier Division finish since 2021 when they ended the season 8th. Arsenal have lost three of their last five matches. So we click the next button and five-star reputation. Our director of football is Paul Mitchell. Fierce rivals, obviously Tottenham. We've got no assistant manager. We need to get that sorted out straight away. 60,700 seat capacity stadium built in 2006. Finances, it says, are okay, which is a bit of a concern. Transfer budget, like we know, is 226 million of a seven million pound wage budget. State of the art training, youth facilities, and excellent youth recruitment. We really do need to make the most of the youth in this club. Aidan Campbell, as you'd have seen from the job interview in the last episode, is our chairperson. In terms of the first term, I mean, it says here four two three one, which is what. I would prefer to play. They're going with Restes in goal, Guayhi and Pataka out wide with Saliba and Tiate in the middle. Rice and Zaya Emery in midfield with Saka on the left, Perez on the right, Havertz behind Van Persie. Mikhail Saka is their key person. Our squad personality is highly professional. What's the next one going to say? Hot prospect is Janil Francis. We need to make a look at him. Mikhail Saka is their top earner and Declan Rice is the club captain. We know all about that. We don't need to see that again. This is the club vision as well. We basically know all about that. We need to finish above Liverpool, above Chelsea, above Man United, above Tottenham. We I mean, basically just finish above everybody. Then schedule press comes to meet the media. Yeah, fine. That's every month. That's exactly how I like it. Welcome to the video, everybody. Leave a like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And let's get into Arsenal Football Club. Just here, we've got a little thing about me taking charge of um, Arsenal. We've also got a little timeline, career milestones here. And when you look at the fact we joined Avely on the 3rd of July 2023 and resigned from Avely on the 14th of March 2027, it was three, four years with Avely. And then from 2027 with Avely, we then went with them until for just over three years until we went and joined Crystal Palace on the 9th of June 2030. And then, of course, here we are now on the 31st of March 2033, nearly three years later, joining Arsenal. It's been quite the rise for us. So this is our inbox. We've got a little email here about playing time, expectations and whatever else. Our supporter profile update. The supporters' influence on the board is low, only two stars. 54.2 million social media following. 45 million season, uh, 45 million, 45,000 season ticket holders and 105,000 season tickets waiting list. I mean, that's massive. If you're on that waiting list, you're not holding out much hope of getting a season ticket, I wouldn't have thought. In terms of our support profile, 5% are hardcore, 25% are core, 23% family, 21% fair weather, 4% corporate and 22% casual. Quite a nice even split, really. Competition, expectation review, they want us to record a top half Premier Division finish. We are in the top half at the moment and we have £226 million to spend in the transfer budget for the summer with a £7.2 million wage budget. We'll have a look at all of that in a moment. 
Tactical direction, I have gone and done a couple of tactics. I will take you there and show you those in a moment. And we've got a load of staffing things that's gone out as well. We've had, I've had a look at... All I've done basically is I've come in here since... Um, since what you just saw, the bit as you first joined the club. Since then and now, I've basically come in, had a look at the staff, done a tactic... And then that's it. I just wanted to get those done straight away so I was ready for this video. So, players currently unhappy. Cal Durin is unhappy. He's a squad player. Not really sure why he's unhappy. If you don't wish to deal with the unhappy players now, so why is he unhappy? I mean, it might be he's not getting enough game time, but he's listed as a squad player at the end of the day. He's 22-year-old Croatian. He's three stars. He's worth, his value is 72 to 80 million. He, I mean, the fact he's three stars as a right back, I mean, he can play anywhere across the back lines. I probably do want to keep him happy, actually. So we'll, we'll have a look at him. In terms of their captaincy, we've got Declan Rice as the captain, Martin Odegaard as a vice captain. I mean, that's a swap around from real life. I think we just keep it that way. I mean, I'm assuming ba Bakayo Saka, who's been here his entire career, has not captained this club on lock the regular basis. In terms of leadership, Mark Grahey and Lorenzo Pataka would be the obvious choices to back them up. But we'll just keep it with those for now. No point upsetting anybody. Meeting frequency for this, we do that every month. We have to attend the meeting, so I'll just get through this. I don't I don't do these meetings, so let's just get through that. And let's have a look at our squad. So in terms of the squad, we're filtering in position of goalkeepers. We've got Guillaume Restes, who is actually a really decent goalkeeper, he's 28 years old as well, so he's got like another 10 years in him. So there's no point getting rid of Restes, he's a top quality goalkeeper. He's on £325,000 a week, so he is a pretty high earner. Then we've got Manuel Fiorotto, who is a pretty decent backup actually. Two and a half stars of current four-star potential, 24-year-old Argentinian international. He's made 10 appearances for Argentina and obviously the attributes in red are the main you know they're, they're the highest attributes I think it's from 16 to 20 anything in blue is I think from 12 to 15 so if we, we need as many blues and reds as possible really and then we've got William Saliba 32 year old William Saliba I mean look at that he's four and a half stars a legendary centre-back Every single physical attribute is in the red. I mean, six foot four, 16 for heading, 17 for jumping reach. If we're not aiming our corners at this man, then there is something seriously wrong. He does have a negative in his dynamics, which is he believes a general lack of support for the manager is just lack of support. I've only just got here. Hang on, what's the dynamics? Oh, wow. Okay, managerial support is poor. It may be early days, but the players are going to take some convincing to get past your lack of experience. Oh, wow. Okay. Club atmosphere is very good and team cohesion is very good. So I, I basically just need to win the players round, is what they're saying. Then we've got Arthur Tiate as a centre-back. He's three and a half stars. Declan Rice is on there listed as a centre-back, but we're not going to play him as a centre-back. I mean, what, what's his rate as a centre-back? No, three stars. We're not going to play him there. Who's main Diamande? Those of you that play FM24 will most likely be very familiar with Diamande. He's only three stars. This. He's not really realised his potential with Arsenal. Raphael as another centre. But we've got a lot of defenders. I mean, this is very obvious that Arsenal played that flat back seven horrible defensive formation before. Gustavo Gonzalez is two-star current, three-and-a-half-star potential at the age of 23. He's a centre-back that can play defensive midfield. I mean, he's probably someone we're going to look at moving on. Um, he, I'm sure we can get better options in than him. At the age of 23, I struggle to believe he's going to improve by a star and a half. Mark Guayhi is an old man, but he's three stars. He, he can do defensive midfield. I mean, he can actually do centre-back left back and defensive midfield so three stars he's solid I suppose Quincy Hartman or Qu Quilinchy Hartman is joining Benfica 
the trans this player was transfer listed and he has been deemed surplus to requirement. It doesn't tell me how much is John. I'm assuming it's for three point three million um, because that's locked in. It's not a value range. It's just three point three million. So he's not going to be here, and, and that's no great show. He's thirty one year old with two and a half star. Then we've got Fabiano Parisi, who's a left back. Two and a half stars in everything. He's He can cross a ball, but again, I think he's a player that I'm probably going to want to move on. It does say he's wanted. He's wanted by Udinese and Benfica. Cal Durin, we already know about. He, he can play anywhere along the back. Then we've got Lorenzo Pacata, Pataka, Pataka. 24-year-old Portuguese international. Four-star wing back. I mean, he, he's proper quality, Pataka. 24-year-old wing back. We're, we're going to enjoy having him in the team. He, I mean, he's very quick as well. He's determined. He's got great decisions. He's brave. Good leadership, work rate, marking. He looks a really decent player. And looking at him in the league for us this season, he's been on 6.96, which considering where Arsenal are in the league in eighth, that's not a bad rating, really. Ionot Roman is another left back. I mean, we've just got so... I mean, why is he here? 23-year-old Romanian with two-star current ability and two-and-a-half-star potential. I mean, he's come from their academy, so that's probably why, why he's still here, because I couldn't imagine they would have gone and bought him from anybody. But he's wanted by Wolves on trans. I mean, again, if Wolves want to give me £15 million for him, I'm happy for him to leave. We've got a lot of players that are trained at clubs, so that kind of thing's not going to be an issue. Danilo, he's the guy that's in real life is currently with Wolves, was linked to Arsenal before, not Wolves, Nottingham Forest. He was linked to Arsenal in real life before he went to Nottingham Forest. Again, he's solid. He's three stars, but he's 31 years old. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be adverse to selling him. Someone gave me 30, 40 million for him. That'd be fine with me. A 34-year-old Martin Odegaard. Wow. I mean, look at that. He is still incredible. He's absolutely rubbish physically, but technically and mentally, he is awesome. He can play in any of the midfield positions. I'm really liking the look of Martin Odegaard, even at the age of 34. Warren Zaire Emery, who's 20... I mean, it's hard to believe he's 26. We're 10 years into the game here, aren't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... We're in the 11th, we can't be in the 11th year of the game, surely. Oh, we are, we're in the 11th year of the game. So, the fact that he's still around, he's only 27, just goes to show, if you're just starting to save, maybe try and get this guy. Who, who does he start with? He's with PSG in real life. Arsenal pay 40.5 million for him. I'd say they've certainly got that 40.5, because he's, he's been pretty consistent throughout his time here. He can play in both of these two areas. He can play as a deep line playmaker. He can play as a central midfielder and advanced playmaker. He's a pretty decent player, I have to say. Bakayo Saka, 30, what, 31 year old Bakayo Saka. Wow. Okay. He turns 32 in September. Again, just look at him. Left or right, he is a beast. Absolutely, he is a beast. 461 appearances and 144 goals. I know you can't see that because that's behind my head. But what a career he's had with Arsenal. Really surprised he's not moved on, actually, because in most FM saves over the last couple of years, he's usually gone to PSG. So it is quite a surprise he's not gone. But he's listed there, not for sale. They, they have absolutely no interest in letting him go. Ibrahim Isak, he's... On the transfer list, he's joining Porto, presumably for 2.3 million. Again, I don't think he doesn't really play where we want him to, so yeah, it's probably not a shame that he's going. Kai Havertz is still at Arsenal. Um, I've said before him, I think it was in one of the how to episodes playlist available on the channel, by the way, that you've got to get rid of your real life biases with players because. Someone like Lukaku, for example, who in real life is absolute n n rubbish in English football. In football manager, he can be a beast. And Kai Havertz is another one of those that if you take what he was like at Chelsea, you wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. But here at Arsenal, 109 goals in 338 games. He's, I mean, he's got 12, 19 goal contributions 
from 28 games this season with an average rate of 7.20. He's been awesome for Arsenal this season and by the looks of it, he has been in previous seasons as well. Ben Allington is a 23-year-old Englishman, two and a half star with three star current. I'm assuming he's another academy product. Yes, he is. The academy products have been rubbish by the looks of it. I have to say that. They don't look anything close to what you'd expect from a club that's got as good of facilities as Arsenal. He's another one that, quite honestly, if someone gave me 20 million for him, I'd be quite happy to see him leave. Ethan Nwanyeri. Now, quite strange, Ethan Nwanyeri is the only player in this Arsenal team that was still around from the start of the game in the academy at the start of the game. 26 years old, he's so young. Four-star current, four-star potential. Again, he looks so good. Look at all the positions he can play. Central midfield, out wide, attacking midfield, up front. This boy has got so... His actual figures seem quite disappointing. 10 goal contributions from 25 games in the league at 6.90. He's kind of come to life in the Premier League. Six goal contributions from nine games at a 7.45. And the World Cup European qualifier for England, he's had one game and scored one goal there. I mean, for England, he looks pretty decent. He's a goal in every three games, 68 caps, 21 goals. So he's had a good England career as well, value of like well over 150 million. Alistair Bruce, we know about him from Crystal Palace. He's pretty much a backup player by the looks of it. They've got a lot of players that can play out wide on the left or right in the AMC position and in the striker. They've got a lot of players here. We might have to trim that down. I mean, bearing in mind, I was looking at bringing in um, Kenta Mahara from Crystal Palace and maybe even um, Duchesne. But as it is at the moment, there's simply there's no room for them. There really isn't. Uh, who we've got next? Nick Jonas Schmetz. I mean, he looks good. He's 10 goals in 26 games, 15 goal contributions in 26 games, four stars. It just looks really good. Well over £100 million on the valuation as well. Shaquille Van Persie, obviously Robert, uh, Robin Van Persie's. So I just wanted to have a look at It's the same negative. Basically, nobody likes me here. 200 set up. It's such high earners at this club. I mean, I, I'm coming from a Crystal Palace team that we really had to watch what we were spending, where this, this is one of the reasons why I've taken this job and why coming to Arsenal seems a step up, because as well as the fact they've got a global five-star reputation, the money that's involved in the club, the reputations of the players, just everything about Arsenal, we've got such a better chance of succeeding with Arsenal than we have with Crystal Palace. So Shaquille Van Persie is another one. And Andre Sangu. I mean, three-star current, four-star potential, 23-year-old Belgium. Bel Belgium have got some really decent players. The Chesney's from Belgium. They've got some pretty decent players. Again, he's got a negative. It's going to be about me. Need to win them round. If we have a look, if we filter the team in regards to goals scored, Kai Havertz is their top scorer with 17 goals. Then it's Van Persie with 13. Schmetz with 12 and Wanieri with 11. Everybody, there's a massive drop off after that. If we look at it from the assists perspective, who are the most creative players we have? Schmetz again is up there with nine. Odegaard with nine. Pataco's a uh, right back with seven. Havertz with seven. Nwanieri six. Parisi six. There's goals in this team. There's no doubt about that. There is goals in this team. If we have a look at the tactics that I've put together to begin with, we've got the 4-2-3-1, custom Gagan press. They want us to do a high-pressing game. This is pretty much the best team we can put out. The dilemma I've got is obviously Declan Rice would come in here as a deep-line playmaker. But then that means Martin Odegaard is out of the team. Um, if we put... Declan Rice up there. It's three and a half star. It's not the four star that you can get from him. But that's probably the option we're going to have of Rice and Odegaard in the middle with Saka, Havertz, Nwanyeri and Schmetz in front of them. Um, the defence, we do seem a bit weak at left back. I have to say that. Despite the fact that Gwai, I mean, we've got Priestley there at the moment. Gwai, he can play there. Play there. He's two and a half stars. If we scroll down this, we've got Cal Durin that can play there. He only comes up as two stars. Hartman is leaving. Roman is rubbish. 
and he's unregistered as well. I don't know what he's unregistered for. I mean, he's. Don't know, we're not in Europe, so I don't know what he's unregistered for. Um, and that's it. But, I mean, we've got several players that can play in these positions, but they're just not really to the standard that we want, you know. And so I think we definitely need to upgrade on the left back position. I would like to upgrade on the centre back, get someone that's four stars in the centre back position, at least three and a half star. Um, Arthur Tieti, I mean, he's he's very good, don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a very decent player, he's three and a half star. But he is 30, oh, and he's actually joining Al Halal for 6.6. So we've got some players leaving. What I do find confusing is I've been into the transfer part previously because I wanted to have a look at who we brought in. I've gone to future transfers and there's nothing in there about future transfers. So I don't really know why they're not listed. But if we look at, well, they're not even on here as the players that have gone out this season. You know, it's it's quite confusing as to who, who's actually coming and going and whatever else because I'm assuming we've got nobody coming in because there's nothing listed. Now, if we look at the finances, we've got 7.2 million in the wage budget. We're currently spending 6.1 million. So we've got 1.1 million left in the wage budget and we'll have more than that once we've let players go and sold players and whatever else. I mean, if we look at the ones that we know for a fact are leaving, i.e. Hartman, he's on £140,000 a week, so we'll be getting that money back. Um, Roman, is he another one that's leaving? I'm losing track of him now. No, it's not Roman. Isaac, yeah, Isaac. That's another 31,000, so that's 170,000. Um, Tiate, that's 230,000. So, I mean, that's like 400,000 pound we're getting back straight from there. There is someone else as well that I put in the dev center that I think I put him in the under 21s. I think it's this guy here. I think. No, it's Dre, Dre N, Endine, I think. Yeah. No, he's on loan at Chef. Who? There, there was somebody else. I know there was. There you go, Vinicius. He's on loan at Inter, joining permanently. Then that's another 69,000. So we're going to have about another half a million left over, base or given back to us. Then we've got, in the dev centre, while we're here, Janelle Francis is our standout player. If we organise them by potential, forget him because he's going to be going, but we've got Francis who's got five-star potential. Jack Gordon who's got three to four-star potential, but again, he's in these attacking positions and I can't see we're really going to be using him. So we're going to try and put him out on loan next season in the hope that he can get some game time and improve himself. Janelle Francis, I mean, he's already valued at 23 to 37 million. Has he ever played for the club? Nope, not in the league, not in the Cups. Nope, he's never played, never kicked a ball for us. He's currently out injured, I think. Or is he just suspended? I think he might just be, yeah, he's just suspended. After him, you've then got Joe White, who could be three and a half star. Borja Perez, who could be three and a half. There's not a great deal in here. If we then look at the under-18 squad, that's even worse. I mean, that there's nothing in here worth looking at. And I don't think they've had the youth intake this year, even though Harry Boyle, at 15 years old, would suggest he is within that mark. When's his contract start? So his contract has started a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it is... The youth, that's the youth intake. So if that's a youth intake, it's been diabolical, quite honestly. So yeah, that's the tactics, the players. So this is the tactic we're looking at. We've got wing-back support, wing-back attack, two ball-playing defenders, deep-line playmaker on support for ball-winning midfielder on defend, two inside forwards, Nwanieri on attack, Sack on support, with Havertz in the attacking midfield role on support and Schmetz up top as an advanced forward. I have also... Training a 4 3 3 is, I think, it might help with these positions here, but then it's taking away from this position. I am going to have a tinker with this during pre season because what I would like to do is have something like a half back that slots back into the defence to make it a back three while we have an inverted wing back. And, you know, I want to try some of these other positions, but for now, we're just going to stick with what we've got and what we know until the end of the season. 
Now, in terms of the schedule, I've I've looked at the schedule and I've got a bit of an issue here because, I mean, look at this form. This form's terrible. But when you look, so we're going to try and play the game against Wolves today just so we can get a bit of a look at the team. We're going to. The idea is then play the rest of the games off camera and come back tomorrow for the last two games of the season: Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich. However, this game here, we play Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park in a few games' time. So I'm thinking what I might do is do the Wolves game today, do Tottenham and Liverpool off camera, come back for Reading and Palace, and then Wednesday's episode will be Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich. It will give us a good look at the team, but a good sample of matches as well. Or what I might do is Palace play the Newcastle and Sheffield Wednesday games off camera and then Ipswich in tomorrow's episode, which means Wednesdays will be the transfer special instead of Thursday. But I'll see how, how things are going, how we're feeling and whatever else. So let's get to part two of the video and we'll have a look at players that we could potentially look at signing for next season. <music> Okay, so here we are in a scouting centre and we don't have a great deal scouted. Um, I don't know if all the scouts left and took all their knowledge with them or what, but it's been pretty difficult to actually find players. We've got this that's come up in our scouting recommendation screen as you first go on. But as you can see, I set up a recruitment focus for a left wing back and a central ball playing defender. We've also got these that are set up as well. I've done Europe and South America. All the others have been done by whatever the guy's name is that does all this but if we actually look into like player range for example it comes up with these but there's nobody here that's got any recommendations next one was a left back except for these two so we've got a bit of work to do in terms of finding defenders what i did do when i first logged in was i went to crystal palace and clicked scout on a few players kenta mahara is an a plus sign mahara as a priority if we look at his rating, he's four stars with five-star potential. So he's just as good for Palace as what he would be for Arsenal. Martin Fernandez, I'm very keen on this guy. He doesn't have a release clause, but he's four stars as a wing-back. And he could even do the inverted wing-back as well, which is what he prefers to do. And we've never used him as that. Antonius Duchesne, another favourite of mine. He's three stars current with five-star potential. And I've done Jackson McCade as well. He's like two and a half star with four star potential. But I've just done that out of curiosity. So, yeah, there's not really a great deal to show you in the scouting area, which is fine because we can get into the game against Wolves. And this is the team we're going with. Restes in goal, Parisi left back, Pataka right back, Gwehi and Saliba in the middle, Odegaard and Zaya Emery in the midfield. They need to learn to play nicely together. Nwanyeri and Saka out wide with Havertz in behind Schmetz. We did pick up an injury to Arthur Tiate. He's out for one to six days, so he won't be involved in today's game. Declan Rice has not passed a fitness test, so we can't have him in the squad. And Ben Allingham is out injured anyway. Ianot Roman is unregistered. He must be in the under-21s or something. No, he's not. I have no idea why he's out. He must be unregistered from the squad for some reason. But what I have decided is with the except well Arthur Tieto said, but with the exception of Declan Rice, pretty much any of those in here that are not already leaving, I'm happy for them to go anyway. So Tieto is leaving, Hartman's leaving, Roman can go, Isaac is leaving, and Allenham can go, and Cuesta can go as well. I'm not too bothered about him. So any of these one, these ones, with the exception of Declan Rice, will probably be gone by the start of next season with new players brought in. Like I say, the left back and centre defence are my priority at the moment. If I have money left over for a luxury, Bakayo Saka might find he's becoming replaced by Kenta Mahara, but we'll see. Right, let's submit the team. Let's get into today's game. I am aware that um, we are going a bit long in today's video, but hopefully you're enjoying it. Hopefully you're happy that we are here at Arsenal. I've got no assistant manager, so I've got nobody telling me what to do. So, oh, let's go that one. Nobody really wanted to be motivated by it. That's Wolves' recent form. They've won two of their last five. 
let's get into the game and let's see what this team is actually about. You know, this is the first game for us. Zai Emery takes the corner. Saliba gets on the end of it. Oh, and he almost put in the rebound. We did say earlier on that our corner should be getting aimed at Saliba. We are going for near post in swingers as the most often one. We've less often set for the central corner and the far post in swinger. Here's Parisi now. Gives it to Mark Guayhi. Gives it back to Parisi. He loses the ball. He didn't look very confident on it, I must admit. Good tackle. Gway, he gives it to Saliba. He then gives it to Saka. Saka's an old man by now. Here's Schmetz. Oh, and it's saved by the keeper. We've got off to a good start. I mean, these opening three, four minutes have been pretty decent, to be fair. Let's turn on the league table. We are in eighth, and obviously Wolves are one place above us. So, we actually, if we have aims of getting European foot, What on earth was that? If we have aims of getting European football next season, we really do need to be beating Wolves. We have got a game in hand over Wolves as well. It looks like the game against Palace is our game in hand as well. Right, Wolves have the ball in defence. We're going to try and bring it out. Jao Gomez, but it's intercepted by Pataka. Gives it to Nwanyeri. Schmetz is through. Oh, and he's missed. He's been scoring for fun this season by the looks of it. Now that I've arrived and my issue with strikers, he's... Obviously not going to score anymore. Zaya Emery with the corner. Whips it in. And it was Saliba with the header. But Martinez comfortably gathered it straight to him. I mean, Saliba's their best player at the moment. He's had a couple of headers from corners. Approaching the 30-minute mark. I mean, we've been all over Wolves. We've had six shots on target not been able to score. It's quite alarming when you can't score from six shots on target. Here's Havertz to Nwanyeri. Out to Paris. This is nice football. Paris is in the box. Oh, I think he hit the woodwork. I don't think that was a keeper saving. I think he's hit the woodwork. And looking at the match stats, yeah, we, we have hit the woodwork. So I'd say that probably was the case. And it's half time. I don't know how it's nil nil at half time. I mean, look at the stats. That is ridiculous. Right. I don't like what I just saw from this team, to be honest. Go back out there, get the points. Come on, boys. First game as Arsenal manager, I'd like it to end in a win. And it'd be a good win as well against, like I say, the Wolves team that are doing pretty decent at the moment. I'm assuming Palace must be winning their game because we were 10 points behind and we're now 12 points behind. I am so interested to see how Palace do now that we've left because they were set up to really do well. Right, Schmetz is going to come off and Van Persie can come on. Um... Who we got here? Saka's not having a great game. What's Sanganu like out there? Mm. Are they any better if you switch them around? No, that's worse. Okay, we'll just go with that for the time being. I mean, Saka needs to realise that there's someone in my thoughts that could be coming in to replace him. Oh, that was close. Right, what I think we'll do now is, I don't know, <laughs> is the truth. What can Danilo do? Can he be a ball-winning midfielder? He should be able to. He don't seem to like it a great deal, but we put Danilo as the ball-winning midfielder. Parisi can come off and Cal Durin can go on. I mean, we are weakening the team doing this, but... The first 11, when they're all fit, is a really, really good first 11. What I am seeing is they don't have much by way of backup. Here's Durin with a throw into the one year. Back to Durin, who puts the ball in the box. Oh, and it's headed over the bar. A boring, goalless, nil-nil draw for a first game in charge by the looks of it. Well, saying that, Wolves have a corner. And it's over the bar. Five minutes of added on time. I mean, we've been good. Defensively, we've been brilliant. Restricting them to just one shot on target. But we need to put our chances away. A nil-nil draw. We're training tomorrow. You don't deserve to have the day off. There you go. Right. So. Arsenal frustrated by draw. If we have a look at the table, we remain in eighth. I mean, we are six points ahead of Newcastle. So... 
but we are still three points behind Wolves and we do need that seventh place for that conference league spot. We're only four points behind Liverpool and seven behind Chelsea. If we have a look at Crystal Palace at how they done, they played the same day and they beat Brentford 2-0. Aurelio Calvo and Kenta Mahara with the goals. So good start for Crystal Palace with life after me. Their manager at the moment, if we have a look, they've got caretaker manager Gary Issa. Be interested to see who gets that job. Right, that's all for today's episode, folks. Thank you very much for watching it. And like I say, for the next episode, I'm not really sure where we're going to come back. It'll be, I do, I really do want to play the Palace game. So it'll be, Palace will be involved in it somewhere. But that'll be tomorrow's video. And I'll see you then. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.